Welcome to the Dead Minds card reveal, part two. Uh, now, this is all 14 of the Dead Minds rares, and that combined with the 16 commons already revealed means most of the set of 35 unique cards is revealed. Uh, only one epic and four legendaries to go. And the main worth of the mini set on whether or not you should buy it comes down to whether or not these legendaries are good. So saving the best for last. The Madman! So let's roll right into it. With Demon Hunter's Proving Grounds, six mana summon two minions from your deck. They fight. This is both better and worse in that duel could potentially have been a combo breaker. Uh, duel ensured that you always had a bigger card than theirs, almost always, because your deck would be loaded with big cards. Proving Grounds, proves to be a little bit tougher to use. So what's the purpose? Maybe you can summon Dormant people, in which case Minion 1 does not fight the Sleepy Guy. Imprisoned Antane times 1, an Illigdari Inquisitor uh, 1 of. That would be absolutely incredible. But I don't think that it's consistent enough to warrant building a Proving Grounds deck, unfortunately. Uh, the other way to build it is with Death Rattle cards, since Death Rattle cards when they die do something. Uh, but that isn't that great either. From Druid, Jerry Rig Carpenter. Two mana, two one pirate. Battle cry draw, choose one spell and split it. Oh my god, it's a two mana, two one that draws two cards. I mean, it's not going to be as good as draw two actual cards, but it's very close. Uh, Jerry Rig Carpenter is just such a efficient card uh, that I could definitely see this just being included in Token Druid and uh, you would include Sow the Soil and Power of the Wild with it. I mean, it's just a good value card. Uh, the only reason why this is potentially considered is because it's not only value, it does provide some decent amount of tempo as well, as it is a 2-1. Uh, alongside the draw 2. Now, Moonlit Guidance is actually value. Uh, 2 mana, discover a copy of a card in your deck. If you play it this turn, draw the original. Uh, in this sense, it's 2 mana, draw 2, if you also play the card you drew. And that is kind of tough to do. If you're playing a tempo deck, it's tough for you to actually include this kind of card draw into your deck. And if you're playing a control value deck, well, first of all, a control value deck doesn't really work in this meta, but second of all, uh, you'd have to wait until very late to play it. But I'll tell you what, uh, because of the nature of the card, Discover, you can choose a pretty cheap card, and you can choose a pretty expensive card near late. And if it's late game, being able to draw two copies of a really expensive card and play one of them uh, is a really good type of card. Definitely a great card for the value-oriented druid, uh, perhaps in the future. Doggy Biscuit is Hunter's cool take on tradable. It's a two mana, tradable. Give a minion plus two plus three. After you trade this, give a friendly minion rush. In the cases that you can't get a minion to stick, you can just trade this away and it's like one mana, give your minion rush and draw a card, which is better rocket boots, uh, because you can also do the two mana version, which is a very solid plus two plus three. If you play Intrepid Initiate on turn one and then you play Doggy Biscuit on turn two, that is a lot of stats. That's a five, five attacking on turn two. Now that's just enough that it may indeed see play, especially since Intrepid Initiate already sees play. Potentially usable in the face hunter or a mid-rangey hunter. Remember the big spell mage of the past? Well, Deepwater Evoker evokes a memory of it with a 4-mana 3-4 pirate battle cry, draw a spell, gain armor equal to its cost. Unfortunately, there's no giant spell decks being played right now, and I doubt Deepwater Evoker will create such an archetype. But... <laughs> uh, here's a big spell though, for those of you trying to do that. Arcane Overflow, 5 mana. Deal 8 damage to an enemy minion, summon a remnant with stats equal to the excess damage. So this is either 5 mana deal 8 damage, or 5 mana deal 1 damage, summon a 7-7. Seven, seven. Pretty good no matter what mode you use, and you're gonna use a variety of modes with this card I'm sure. Perhaps one of the problems is right now we're in a combo meta, where there are very few minions on the board, and just summoning one big guy isn't necessarily that good. So I don't really see a use for the overflow right this moment. And I don't see big spell mage uh, being a great deck right this moment, but someday. Whereas this paladin, righteous defense, three mana, set a minion's attack and health to one, give the stats it lost to a minion in your hand. Seems pretty good. This is subdue. 
And for one more mana, you're adding potentially a substantial amount of stats to a minion in your hand. And given that the target you want to hit is with Subdue, or Righteous Defense in this case, is usually a big minion, uh, that's pretty good. If there were decks out there that consistently ran big minions, some of the standard decks are running the fewest amounts of minions you've ever seen. So a answer card that deals with minions right now, uh, not really in vogue at the moment. Great card, wrong time? Similar story with Wealth Redistributor, 5 mana 2, 8, Pirate, with Taunt, and Battlecry swap the attack of the highest and lowest attack minion. When you play this, this will almost always be the uh, lowest attack minion, and you probably don't want to summon a guy with your button, but in standard right now, where minion combat is probably at an all-time low, as good as this card is, there might not be any wealth to redistribute. Priest gets Copycat. 3 mana, 3, 4 beast. Battlecry add a copy of the next card your opponent plays to your hand. That's actually a really nice card. Uh, efficient, 3 mana, 3, 4. Get a card. And the card that you're getting will always, at the very least, have been in your opponent's deck. So while it may not synergize that well with your deck, uh, it's hard for it to be that bad since your opponent included in their deck. On the other hand, with as many spells as a lot of decks are running right now, uh, you can get a pretty narrow card. Also, perhaps more concernedly, it's a value priest card, and value decks are an all-time bad in the current meta due to the prevalence of the combo decks and just decks' ability to kill you before your value comes into play. Uh, there has been some remarks that, hey, with Copycat, you could play this on turn 4 to prevent your opponent from playing the quest reward on turn 5. But you know what they're going to do? They're going to play cards on turn 5 and then play the quest reward on 6. And sure, that's a stall, but, you know... Free stalling for a turn isn't really a thing. Parlay is a rogue meme spell. One mana swap this for a card in your opponent's deck. It reminds me a lot of Warlock's Neferatu. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Uh, in that you can think of it as burning the top card of your opponent's deck. There's going to be one card that your opponent will be missing. Uh, and it's whatever you got with Parlay. Against certain combo decks, you might get really lucky. And then Parlay into their win condition. And then they can't win. Uh, however, against pretty much the majority of decks out there, Parlay actually is one mana, uh, do perhaps almost nothing. It's a cute disruption tool, but it uh, just isn't a great deal. Shaman! Soccer Hook! 4 mana 3-6 Pirate, at the end of your turn, transform your weapon into one that costs one more. That's actually quite powerful. Uh, if you can get a weapon uh, at one durability and then you play your Sucker Hook, you turn your useless weapon that was about to break into an actual weapon. And weapons, for the most part, tend to be costed very accurately. As in, the higher the mana cost of a weapon, the better it is. Or at least that's what I thought before I actually looked up the weapons and the mana costs, and I found that your 5-drop weapons, Bog Spine Knuckles and Doomhammer, uh, well, turns out 5 turns into 6. And there's only one 6-drop weapon, and that 6-drop weapon is a Hammer of the Naru, and it's a 3-3. Three, three. And that's not great. Uh, your Hammer of the Naru will eventually turn into Librum of Judgment, or Gorhal at least, but uh, this is currently not good due to the lack of 6-drop weapons. Furthermore, it shares a problem with the previous cards mentioned, that this is a value card. It saves your weapon, and it gives you a bigger random weapon later. Uh, but we're really not in a meta where the value on this is going to matter. Hurts my soul is the mirror value tend to say that. Uh, hey, let's look at Hullbreaker. 4 mana, 4 3 demon, Balakrai and Death Rattle draw a spell. Your hero takes damage equal to its cost. Ooh, so you thought Backfire was good on 3 mana, uh, which drew you 3 cards and took you 3 damage. Well, for 1 more mana, you're going to get 2 cards instead of 3, uh, but you get a 4 3 along with it. So 1 more mana than Backfire, and you collect a 4 3. Uh, you're going to take more damage than Backfire, probably, but the spell costs in your deck might not be that big, and if the spell costs in your deck are big, you could complete your uh, quest quite quickly. A Hullbreaker may indeed see its play in the Demon Seed type decks. Congratulations, Quest Warlock! It's, uh, it's just for you. Warriors got a Blacksmithing Hammer! Uh, 4 mana, 5-1. Tradable after you trade this game plus 2 durability. That's really cool mechanic. Uh, you probably don't want to play this the first time around uh, because it's 4 mana 5-1, but sometimes you want to pay 4 mana and deal 5 damage. 
and that's acceptable. Uh, and when it's not, you just save it for later, and then eventually you'll draw 4 mana 5-3. Such a card would be good in a meta where you were going for long-term value. Wait a second. Because of the low card draw of Warrior in general, uh, it would take a while to re-get your blacksmithing hammer. And while I could see it in a slower control meta where you wanted to milk the value and then maybe like get a 4 mana 5-5 five, five weapon someday, I don't think this is... This is the place for that. Finally, last but not least, we've got Multicaster. 4 mana 3, 4, Battlecry draw a card for each different spell school you've cast this game. Immediate thought was, hey, a mage can play a 4 mana 3, 4 that draws 3 cards because you're playing fire, ice, and uh, fire, water, <laughs> fire, frost, and arcane. But yeah, that's a good possibility for that. Otherwise, this is just a value card, and the value cards don't really perform that well in this meta. Now perhaps the interesting thing is this meta that I'm referring to is the United and Stormwind meta, and most of it is due to the quest lines. And the quest lines are in the same meta as these value cards, so they'll always be in the same meta. Uh, what's going to have to change up in order to make it so that value cards have a place when quests aren't necessarily about value because quests kind of win the game and no amount of value can overcome that? It's a puzzle, for sure. Uh, looking forward to seeing what the legendaries are and seeing if we have a grand new direction or if the cards are doomed because you're trying to collect value in a combo meta. What can we do with all of this value if we're dead?